Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at you guys yet again from the bunker. And uh, guys, we're here to talk about muzzle devices, flash hiders, compensators, brakes. What are they? What do they do? And what's best for you? So of course, like most of our videos have been recently, we want this to be a uh, group discussion, all right? What works best for you guys? And let's talk about different scenarios where they would work, all right? so. Uh, there's all sorts of different types of muzzle devices out there, but we're gonna be covering pretty much the main three, the big three that are most popular, flash hiders, brakes, and comps, all right? And uh, what do they do exactly, okay? So uh, we can talk about the first one, flash hiders. I think that's pretty self-explanatory as to what exactly uh, is the purpose behind a flash hider. So you might notice on this guy right here, uh, this one here has ports going all the way around the muzzle device itself, all the way around. Now what that's designed to do is think about it, all these gases are coming down the barrel and typically what you see that, you know, that fireball effect that you typically have is coming from all of those hot gases hitting the cold air, you're hearing that boom, that bang, and they're igniting out the end of the barrel. All right, cool. So why that's bad. <laughs> First off, uh, you don't want to be giving away your position if your entire intent is to not get shot at, all right? So the flash hider has an entire military applicable design simply because you want to be able to shoot at the enemy you without them returning effective fire, pretty much. You know, you want to have that unfair advantage, if you will, throw in the Magpul slogan there. But uh, anyway, so flash hiders are great because they cut back the flash or the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the report, I guess you could say. But yeah, they cut back on the flash so that way the enemy can't pinpoint you, okay? And those are easily noted again by the several ports going all the way around the muzzle device itself. All right. And the next one I want to talk about is kind of like a, it's a compensator. It's very similar to a flash hider but it's what I have on my Mark 18 over here, which you guys know by now is like my favorite little toy. And uh, this guy, you'll notice, has the same type of ports going all the way around. All right, we've got a couple little cutouts here, but you really don't need to actually can like take, take a look at these cutouts to identify what a compensator is. All you really need to know is that on the bottom here, it's pretty much closed off, kind of like your standard A2 uh, birdcage. Like on this guy right here, your standard you know, birdcage as they call it. Notice how you've got the ports on the top and then that closed bottom. All right, so it helps mitigate that flash, uh, not as good as a dedicated flash hider will, but it helps mitigate it some. And then you've got this part here, which is also to help kind of recoil. It's compensating for these gases and the recoil effect. So that way with these gases escaping out the top of the muzzle, it's pushing the barrel down some instead of, you know, doing this type of number rocking back into your shoulder, all right? Also, it's a good thing too, if you're firing in the prone position, uh, it helps to keep the gases from kicking up a bunch of dust around you. Uh, granted, I mean, if you're shooting, you know, pretty close to the ground, it's gonna kick up dust naturally anyway, because you can't really compensate all the gases out here, right? I mean, they're still coming out, they're still got that large opening right here that's gonna be exiting the uh, barrel and the muzzle device. So, compensators, flash hiders, they do a great job at, you know, hiding the flash. Flash hiders that are dedicated to that are gonna do a better job, all right? And compensators, you can typically, kind of like my Surefire on the Mark 18 here, you can actually angle this guy, you can time it to you know, pretty much wherever you want it to go. So what I'm trying to say is you can actually rotate this guy so it's angled more this way or angled more this way, depending on how you shoot. So if you notice that you recoil, maybe let's say you recoil kind of up and away, you can actually angle it so the gases are escaping more in this direction to help angle or help mitigate the recoil down this way. So it's just, depending on how your firearm shoots, how you shoot your firearm, you can actually angle your compensators to how they fit you exactly, or to fit it how exactly you want, all right? And then we've got brakes, all right? Now brakes, they're gonna have the larger port openings off to the side 
of the firearm itself. So you see these three ports that we've got going on here on my AR-10, and these are great to pretty much help mitigate recoil a lot, all right? So if you have a higher energy round traveling down the barrel, it's actually gonna, you'll find it to be a little bit more efficient with higher energy rounds, simply because you're feeling most of the recoil from the gas and, and not so much from the round itself, if you will. So all of these escaping gases coming out the direct side of this guy here is going to, instead of fighting recoil going in any certain direction, pushing all these gases out the side are gonna help stabilize and keep this guy a level shooter, all right? So those are ultimately the different types of brakes and uh, muzzle devices that we have here. And you can always tell a brake too. Typically, you can always identify them with just these larger port openings that you see. And of course, usually the closing of it, I guess you say, or the, the end of it is usually a smaller uh, diameter than your flash hiders and things like that. All right, and what's neat about some muzzle devices is the fact that they also act as quick detach for suppressors. Let me show you. So if I take my Yankee Hill muzzle device with my Yankee Hill suppressor, these guys just go right on like that. There we go, and it ratchets down. So now I've got a suppressor on my M4 build here, all right? Pretty cool. Now what's cool about these too is that you can actually transfer these from different devices. This is a 30 caliber can, so it's fine to shoot a 5.56 to it like this one here, but if I wanted to, I could pop this guy off like so, and then throw it on my 7.62 chambered AR-10 here with the brake, same way just like that, and now I'm shooting suppressed on my 308 here. Pretty cool stuff, right? And I would highly recommend shooting suppressed if you're running a brake on something as short as this guy. Why, you might ask? Well, all of those escaping gases on a shorter barrel, you're gonna have naturally more gases that are escaping the barrel. Uh, coming out of the brake, the brakes are just naturally louder. It's, it's instead of breaking up the gas like flash hiders and compensators do, the brakes kind of keep them all together when coming out the side and they have a lot louder bang to them, okay? And so uh, if you're that guy running with a team maybe or shooting at an indoor range, you might get some funny looks, people being a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> whenever you're shooting a short barrel with a brake on it. Because like I said, it's much more concussive than what a flash hider or compensator would be. So if you are shooting a uh, shorty like this guy here, a pistol of some sort with a brake on it, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to make sure it's a QD and one that you can uh, fit a suppressor on, you know, just in case, you know, cause you don't want to be that guy, you know, especially if you're like you're in a team element and you're having to, you know, engage enemy or something like that. And you got a guy sitting right here next to you and they're trying to shoot as well, but you're just blasting them in the face with gases. Yeah. That's probably not going to be uh, all of that friendly of an environment with your friendlies. Okay. So just keep little things like that in mind, but brakes compensators on shorties like this, I think are great brakes on again, uh, long guns with, uh, you know, uh, higher velocity rounds, a little bit higher punch, things like that, or harder punching rounds, definitely would recommend a break on. That's where you'll see those kind of be a little bit more effective overall. All right. So yeah, pretty fun stuff, guys. Again, we've covered compensators. We've covered, you know, flash hiders. We've covered the old faithful, you know, A2 birdcage, like on the Springfield Saint here, just, you know, good stuff and breaks and also QDs and suppressors and stuff like that which by the way i don't know if you guys know this or not a lot of you guys might be new to the channel new to firearms in general uh suppressors are legal to own go check out the american suppressor association and uh let's get those taken off the nfa how about it yes let's do that let's go ahead and talk about our giveaway guys and uh talk about a break i should have actually shown this guy off because first off it's probably going to be easier to look at it because I don't have to be holding it up like I did everything else. Check out this guy here. This one definitely is more of a break, of course, kind of with a flash hider element, if you will. The slimmer ports kind of look like it, but this right here definitely blocks all those gases coming from the top and the bottom and pushes them out to the side, all right? But anyway, this guy is the FN Ballista chambered in 338 
Lapua. Ooh, doggy, this thing is sweet. And the brake on this guy definitely helps with the recoil on a fast mover like the 338 is. It hits hard, guys, let me tell you. And it is a heck of a lot of fun to shoot. This is a great distance gun. So for you guys that are in the market for a precision rifle, this is where it's at, all right? Bolt action, 338 Lapua by FN. This is the FNH Ballista, completely like, customizable stock on this guy you can change your comb height but you can even change like the direction of which your butt pad sits and the position that i was shooting on i actually kind of liked it in this position here where it was off to the right because when i was shooting this guy i was really getting down on it and it pushed right into the pocket here right in the meat instead of the bone and whatever else out here on the shoulder very comfortable to shoot this guy with that completely customizable stock and yes it even folds off to the side just like that for, you know, your concealed carry nature if you need it. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, this is our current giveaway, guys. The FN Ballista with the Trigicon 10 mile 3 to 18 by 44 optic. And this thing is a beautiful optic first focal plane. You can reach out there and touch whatever target it is that you're looking at with this guy. No problem. So you guys go get your entries in for this one. By the way, anybody else notice too that FN actually got all the uh, flat dark earth the same color? Is it just the scar that they just can't get right? I don't, I don't know, but who doesn't love the 50 shades of FDE on the scar anyway? All right, check it out, guys. Again, you can get your entries in at classicfirearms.com. No purchase necessary to win this guy. Just go out there and be loud on social media. You know, share your referral link out there. Make sure your friends are using your referral link, and if they're not, find some new friends, go to the range, tell them you're trying to win this beast. And they'll be like, oh, well, really? Oh, cool, well, how are you doing that? Classic firearms, here's my referral link. Boom, 900 entries, do it. You're welcome, God bless you all. We'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.